Hey guys, welcome back to the Electric Bike Lab. Today we're gonna to be looking at a two-wheel drive kit that we're offering. And this is a pretty cool kit. It's able to power both motors from one controller. Everything is plug and play. It's very similar to our other hub motor kits that we offer. In the past, a lot of times people would run two separate controllers, and then they'd have to do kind of funny things like splicing the throttle, splicing the pedal assist sensor to get both motors to work. But this is a, this is a pretty cool option for some of you guys out there that are looking for a high power setup that's convenient, uh, easy to put together. So having two motors is really good for torque and just that higher power that you always need versus like doing like one 1000 watt motor, you can always do like two 500s. Yeah, so traction is definitely one thing that two wheel drive uh, allows for having both wheels powering it. Uh, a couple other benefits that aren't as obvious is that you're way less likely to overheat two motors compared to one. So if you're doing some aggressive riding, if you've got a lot of hills, if you're doing some steep climbs, uh, it, it can be pretty easy to overheat one motor. And so if you have two motors, you're splitting that load and it just drastically uh, reduces that chance of overheating. And the second thing is that if you have a motor that's able to spin at a certain RPM when it's freewheeling, you're never gonna really see that speed uh, when you're driving it with one motor. But when you have two motors, because you have more power, you actually get closer to that freewheeling speed. So in our case, these are pretty fast uh, spinning motors on 48 volt with a 26 inch wheel. These are getting about 50 to 55 kilometers per hour. You'd never really see that with one motor. Uh, you'd be seeing like 40, 45 kilometers an hour. But when there's both motors that are working together, you actually do see those higher speed uh, thresholds, which is pretty awesome. One thing that I wanted to talk about is that in Hamilton, we have something called the escarpment and driving up there, that normally will really get a motor hot, especially if you're uh, wide open the whole time and the motor's not able to spin fast because it's it's getting loaded. But with two motors, uh, I, when I was doing a test on this, I was able to climb up the escarpment, absolutely no problem, maintaining 50 kilometers per hour. And when I came back and touched the motors, they were both still cool to the touch. So pretty awesome how much power and how uh, how much freedom you have when you have the two motors working together. Another thing to look at is the size of this controller. So this is a custom controller that we had manufactured for us from KT Controllers, which is one of the biggest uh, controller companies in e-bikes. And we specifically requested to get basically the maximum power availability out of this controller. So if you look, um, we actually have each motor is pulling a peak of 25 amps and it's a 48 volt controller it can also run on 52 volt but that's some serious power yeah with uh, both motors you can get about 2500 watts of power and uh, that's peak power and then about 1200 watts of rated continuous power yeah so that's a that's a substantial amount of power and of course you're going to need a battery that's able to provide that kind of power um, so in our case on this guy we've got a 52 volt 25 amp hour battery that we're running it's got the samsung 50e cells in it it is a 70 cell pack 14 s5p so that's 52 volt, uh, 50 amps continuous that the, the battery is able to provide. So it, it more than uh, does the job. Just so you know though, it does require a lot of battery in order to power two of these motors, especially at the power levels that they're, they're running. So the motors in our case are the MXUS um, 500 watt uh, GDF15 and GDC15. So the, the F is for front, the C is for cassette. One thing that people will often ask is, can you turn on one motor at a time? And as far as we know, with this controller, you can't. So when both motors are on, they're both on. So when you turn on the display, if one of the motors is unplugged, it's just gonna read pulse sensor error or it's gonna read some kind of error. So this is a, as far as we know, a dedicated uh, for two motors running all the time. Um, if you do want to have the selectability of one motor versus another motor, you might still have to go with the old school uh, setup like this. Or if there's anybody out there that knows how we could possibly make a switch to be able to run rear wheel drive versus two wheel drive, let us know. We'd love to know any kind of feedback that you might have. Uh, another concern that we have for it, but it might not be too big of a deal, is the gauge on this battery connector. So uh, we're gonna do some testing, but if it doesn't get hot, it's probably not a concern. But if it does get hot, we'll probably be swapping these all out with a thicker gauge cable. Yeah, right now it looks like a 14 gauge that's on here, but you can easily open up the controller and then sort of get in there and then desolder these 14 gauges and feed like a 12 gauge. Uh, to handle that current passing through so yeah so we're going to do a test where we just run at max power for a good chunk of time and then we're going to feel the conductor and see if it's getting warm or hot another thing that we wanted to address is regenerative braking so one thing that we, that's really cool with two motors is the the possibility of having uh regenerative regenerative braking for both wheels that way you kind of have brakes coming front and back uh most motors though in this form factor are geared motors and so they aren't capable of regenerative braking because they have a free wheel inside. Yeah, so if you open up the motor and then if you weld the clutch shut on these motors, they can actually spin backwards and provide regen braking. And we actually tried this on one of our other motors on the Troxxas bike and it seemed to work pretty good. 
yeah, so that is one way is you can weld the clutch shut. That's a pretty popular thing. Um, and you can also get a fixed clutch setup so it's not even a clutch at all, just a fixed setup uh, that would allow for regenerative braking. What's cool about these controllers is that they do have a regenerative braking feature. So C13, I believe on the LCD, uh, on the LCD parameters, you're able to set from zero to five for regenerative braking. One being the lowest, two, three, four, five being the highest, or zero being no regenerative braking at all. That's something that we want to test out. Um, this being a 48 volt intended controller though, that's not going to work very well on a 52 volt battery because 54.6 volts is roughly going to be the threshold when regenerative braking starts happening. So if you have a 52 volt battery that's fully charged, it's not going to be doing regenerative braking until the bottom kind of half of the battery or else the controller just has that built in so that it's not overcharging the battery. So it's going to think that the battery is full until it kind of drops below 54.6. So these controllers, they have your motor cable on each side, battery cable, pedal assist, and then your handlebar harness. Your handlebar harness is able to run a light up front. Yeah, only one light, however. But uh, usually like these controllers will have a rear light plug, as you can see this red one, but this controller does not. So if you're using your harness, you can only run one light, usually at the front. Yeah, so this is front light compatible, not rear light compatible currently. Uh, in our next generation, we will have this available with a rear brake light option. Also, in our next generation of these controllers, we will be getting them so that they can operate between 40 to 75 volts. So they will provide regen in higher voltage setups like 52 volt or even 60 volt. You'll be able to run regenerative braking with a higher voltage battery. So that's pretty cool. Stay tuned for that as well. So guys, that's a look at our two wheel drive setup. Uh, hope you guys like it. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you think. Is two wheel drive excessive? Is it necessary? Um, do you think that having two wheel drive regen will make a huge difference? Um, yeah, those are all questions and things that we would love to uh, discuss with you guys in the comments. Uh, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it and you like this kind of content, be sure to like, subscribe to our channel, and also let us know what you want to see, what kind of projects you want to see from the Electric Bike Laboratory. We're always trying to do new stuff. Uh, we're always trying to push the limits. And yeah, this stuff's fun. So anything you guys can think of, we'd love to hear it. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.